afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, my name is J.P. Mosen, and it's uh, certainly a pleasure to be with you uh, today. Uh, and and my colleagues and I will be with you the next two, 12 weeks uh, or possibly 13 weeks if you are uh, participating in the depth uh, sessions. Uh, we will be walking you through the material that we feel uh, is very important and has a high probability of uh, appearing uh, in the morning part of the exam. The, the, the 12th part series is designed to prepare you for the breath part of the exam, and that is what we will do. Uh, today, I will cover structural analysis with you, and uh, the topics that we cover in this session and others uh, follow the topics that are explicitly listed in the NCEES uh, series of topics that are uh, covered on the exam. Uh, once again, we concentrate on the topics that we feel have the high probability of showing up on the exam. As far as structural analysis is concerned, you need to remember, and all of you, all of you at some point have had uh, a course in structural analysis, and you do remember uh, that uh, there are two types of structures. One is determinate, the other is indeterminate. There used to be, the PE exam, it used to um, cover both determinate and indeterminate structures in the morning exam. However, Several years ago, about three years ago, when the construction uh, module was added to the test, they eliminated, for the morning exam, they eliminated the indeterminate structures analysis. Therefore, I will tell you, uh, those of you who are taking uh, in the afternoon, if you're taking something other than structures, all you need to uh, be concerned about is indeed um, the determinant uh, analysis. And we will, we will talk about that, uh, just the determinant analysis um, throughout this presentation. However, you do need to know how to distinguish between a determinant structure and an indeterminate structure. And that I will show you how to do. All right? On the test, they may ask you, give you a structure, and ask you if it's determinate or indeterminate. That you need to know. Um, however, please pay very close attention. Those of you who, who are planning on taking the structures exam in the afternoon, you, however, are responsible to, uh, to know how to analyze indeterminate structures. All right? Just those of you who are taking structures in the afternoon. For that reason, towards the end of this presentation, I have the topic called moment distribution. Moment distribution, for those of you who are structural engineers, you recognize the terminology. And that is a technique that helps you quickly um, analyze an indeterminate structure. I have a uh, series of problems uh, that deals with that in this uh, document in the handout, but please pay very close attention. I do not intend to cover that part of the presentation today. Uh, I will not do that. It's just there for your uh, reference. And indeterminate structures analysis will not be covered in the uh, structure's depth. So uh, this is where you get that information. All right. The rest of you who are taking in the afternoon something other than the structures focus, uh, let's uh, let's uh, work on uh, learning how to analyze determinate structures. But before we do that, um, who can tell me? Um, Uh, yeah, Matthew I, uh, is asking a question. I, I answered that. Uh, indeterminate analysis is not required for the general portion. Uh, uh, Matthew is saying general 
option in the afternoon. I'm, I'm not aware of a general option in the afternoon. We're talking about the PE exam here. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's continue. Um, how do we tell whether a structure is determinate or indeterminate? So here uh, we have examples of indeterminate, uh, I'm sorry, these are determinate structures. Let's start with, uh, uh, with the top, with the top uh, beam, that's a beam. And tell me, who can tell me how do we decide? How do we decide whether a structure is determinate or in indeterminate? Who can tell me? If you could just type it in just very quickly, um, and then we'll go from there. How can we tell whether a, tr a structure is determinate? Okay. Okay, Amanda is saying a uh, number of uh, unknowns uh, versus number of equations. Uh, that's correct. Uh, and Tyler also says, says the same thing, number of variables versus number of equations. Okay, very good. Let's, let's talk about that. So um, the question is, how would you be able to tell whether um, a given structure is determinate or indeterminate? Well, this is what you need to do. Uh, uh, Tyler is uh, correct, and so is Amanda, and, and several, of, uh, several other ones uh, mentioned the same thing. Arash also it has a, a, a suggestion. So here's what you guys have to do. Let's say that this is uh, on the test, and we are looking at uh, deciding deciding whether this is uh, a determinate or indeterminate. Step number one, the first thing that you do is uh, you need to identify the supports. All right, so how many supports, how many supports does this structure have, the beam? All right, well, I'm going to show you the supports. This is one. This is a support. What type of support is that? That is, that is, a pin support, P-I-N. That's a pin support. And how many unknowns are there at a pin support? When we talk about unknowns, please write it down. We're talking about the number of reactions. So how many, expect, how many reactions do you expect at a pin support? Uh, those of you who said uh, two, you are indeed correct. All right? So two reactions we expect uh, at a uh, pin support. Now, what about the other uh, support. We have another support that's uh, right over here. Uh, right over here. And guys, that is a roller. Whenever you see a circle sitting on a, on a uh, surface, uh, that is a roller. And how many unknowns are there at a roller? One reaction. Jacqueline Old says roller has one reaction. That's correct. All right. Now, how many other um, reactions do we have here? Uh, well, first, let's look at uh, how many unknowns we have, and uh, this is another support. That's another support that we have. Now, this support, what kind of support is this? Uh, you're right, that's a roller. So how many are the total um, reactions that we have? How many total unknowns, the total reactions? So we have two at the pin support, one and one, so there are four. We are four um, uh, so, uh, unknowns. How many equations of equilibrium do we have to use? Well, the number of equations of equilibrium, uh, there are three. There are always three, all right? So here's what you need to do. You need to compare the number of unknowns with the number of equations that we have available to solve those unknowns with. So. We had four unknowns and three equations of equilibrium. Here is the problem, however. If the number of unknowns equals the number of equations, that makes it a determinate, statically determinate structure. However, with this particular beam, and this is very, very important. I'm, I want all of you to please pay attention. With this particular beam, there is 
a condition that I have to uh, highlight for you, and that is simply this uh, this hinge. You see that? Does everybody see that? That's called an internal hinge. And usually, they either use the word hinge or they use a, a circle within the beam, as we have, as you can see there. Now, what happens with an internal hinge is that the internal hinge gives us one additional equation of equilibrium. Write that down. An internal hinge gives us one additional equation uh, of equilibrium. And this is something that, that, that they can and they will do on the test, all right? So uh, Matthew is asking, what do you mean by number of equations? We're talking about the equations of uh, um, equilibrium, which are three of them, Matthew. One is, uh, one is um, uh, summation of forces in the x direction equals to 0, summation of forces in the y direction equals to 0, and summation of moments is equal to 0. Um, that's, those are the equations, Matthew. So in this case, however, uh, we have four unknowns. However, because of this internal hinge, because of the internal hinge, we have the three original equations of equilibrium and then one additional one because of the internal hinge. Therefore, we have four unknowns and four uh, equations of equilibrium. Therefore, this particular beam is indeed uh, statically determinate. All right, let's look at the, the truss. This is a truss structure in the bottom. Um, I'll wait for you. Tell me how many unknowns do you see? Well, again, what you have to do, all you have to do is identify the supports. We have one support here. That's a pin support. That gives you two, two unknowns. And then here's another roller support. So that's all the supports that I see. So those two supports will give you three unknowns. And again, Matthew, how many equations of equilibrium do we have here for this truss? Since there are no internal hinges, we only have three equations of equilibrium. Therefore, three unknowns, three equations of equilibrium, that makes that structure determinate. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Here, there are examples of indeterminate uh, structures. So please help me out. Uh, if we look at this, uh, Mary Hill is asking me, what is the condition at the hinge? Uh, it, that, that, is, that, is, that gives us an, a moment equation. Um, so what we can do, Mary, is to write an equation uh, of the moment around wherever the hinge is, and that would be equal to 0. All right? Very good. Excellent. So Let's take a look at here. Uh, first, step number one, if we're looking at the top uh, structure, which is actually, this is, if you pay attention, the, the left support is a, uh, is, a, is a fixed support. So how many supports do we have? Well, uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can circle them. This is a support, and that, that nomenclature uh, shows a uh, fixed support. And please remember, write it down. Every time we have a fixed support, there are three unknowns. Summation of, uh, well, there is a reaction in the x direction. There is a reaction in the y direction. And since this is fixed, it does not allow the beam to rotate in any, uh, any direction. Therefore, uh, moment is also zero. So just remember, at a fixed support, there are three unknowns, three reactions. Then the next support that we encounter is this one. And this is indeed, a, that's supposed to be a circle. So that is a roller, so one unknown. And then the other support that I see is this one on the far right. And that's also a roller. And I already see Donald, uh, Donald says uh, five reactions. So is Van. Van, your last name is not easy to pronounce. So I'm just going to say Van, if you don't mind. So, uh, so we have five unknowns. All right, guys. The next thing that, that you see, take a look and see, are there any internal hinges? I do not see any internal hinges. All right. Then how many equations of uh, equilibrium do we have? Three. All right. There you go. Uh, Ryan Allen says uh, three. By the way, hi, Ryan. Um, so what we have here 
are write it down five equa uh, uh, five unknowns three equations of equilibrium if the